Good morning, Deacon Saunders here, and it's second Sunday, and it is Sunday school time. And our title for today's Sunday school is Young David Anointed King. And this come and our text will be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 4b, and verses 6 through 13. And we have related scriptures, which is 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. And then we jump to chapter 15 of 1 Samuel, and we will be going through verses 1 through 23. And then we also have Psalms chapter 51, verses 1 through 19. And we have Mark chapter 7, verses 14 through 23. And the place is Bethlehem. And the time is, it's about 1025 B.C. And now golden text will be coming out of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And it reads as such. The Lord says not as a man seeth, for man looketh upon the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And that's 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And church now, it is prayer time. <clears throat> so let's pray. And I don't know what nobody's going through, but I know someone who does. And that's our Lord God Almighty who knows all. So when you have a problem or you just want to pray, just ask God, say, Lord, help me. And I'm a living witness that he's able to do what he say he's going to do because his word never fails. His word never fails. Never fail. Psalm right wrote a song and said, God never fails. And I believe that. So let us pray. Thy Heavenly Father, we come on this beautiful second Sunday, Lord God, that we've never seen before. Lord, we don't know what this Sunday going to hold for us, Lord God. We don't know what turmoils we're going to go through. We don't know what, we don't know what situation we're going to be in. But Lord, one thing we do know, that when we woke up this morning and our eyes opened up, we know that was a blessing. And for that, God, we just want to say thank you. And as I stated before, Lord, we don't know what this Sunday holds, but we know that if we hold on to your word, where your word tells us that you will never leave us or forsake us, that tells me no matter what this Sunday brings, this Sunday, when we go through, whatever we go through, we're going to go through with you, Lord God. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you. Now, Lord God, anoint Sister Simon as she brings the Sunday school lesson this morning, Lord God. And that is sink into our hearts and into our souls and into our minds, Lord God. Because we know that you're coming back and you're looking for a church without spider wrinkle, Lord God. And we want to be a part of that church. And Lord God, just can continue to bless us and keep us in your care. And Lord, touch every pastor everywhere that is preaching the gospel, that's preaching that you gave us your only begotten son who died on the cross for our sins. And you rose again on that, and he rose again on that third day, Lord God. And we know when Jesus rose on that third day, we know he rose with all power, all power in his hand. So that tells me if I know that my Jesus rose with all power, that I can go through him for anything, because I know he has the power. And for that, God, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen, amen, amen. 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 Hello, 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 and welcome back to another uh, edition of the Sunday School Lesson. Mm -hmm. And Deacon Saunders, I just want to give a prayerful shout out, if you will, if that's mm, an appropriate thing to do. Listen, we have been going to so many home-going services, yeah. and we just want to lift up the bereaved families, uh, mothers who are losing their adult children, um, families who are losing siblings and aunties and grandmothers and mothers um, and fathers um, and we're just losing family and friends um, but God knows he says that what we belong to him yeah he's a, he put us here but just for a little while what season to fulfill whatever plan that he has in our life. And we just want to say, thank you, Lord. But one day we shall return back to him. But we just want to lift up those families that they find peace in the midst 
of the storms that they're going through in their lives and know that with God excuse me is that how you say it what? nothing fails and so God never fails God never fails mm. he never fails yeah. and the plan that he have upon our lives never fails amen okay so um, we started out this summer quarter in the Bible Expositor and Illuminator that's produced by Union Gospel Press. We want to thank them for um, awesome lessons. They're uh, pretty uh, easy. I like the way that they flow and you really get a biblical, uh, a great biblical view from lesson to lesson mm -hmm. and how they lay it out. Um, we've been talking about God's work through women and youth. Now, for the last two months, we have been lifting up the women of God. Um, we're talking about how um, a sinner served Christ. And then last week, we talked about the faithful servant in the church. Mm. So this week, we're going to focus our attention for the next three lessons on the youth in the church isn't that amazing the young people of faith and so today our lesson is about a young man named david parents we don't know the plan that god has uh in the lives of our children no right no and doubt. so um i just before we actually get into uh, the notes that I have and the commentary. I just want to um, go to the related to the related scriptures and share with you uh, to help kind of pull this message um, into focus. First uh, Samuel chapter thirteen. Our scripture lesson text is out of First uh, uh, Samuel chapter sixteen. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But let's back up to chapter 13 and go to verse 8. And here we're talking about when Samuel, the priest, the spiritual advisor to the Israelites, the man of God for them, mm -hmm. how he rebukes the first king, uh, the first human king that he is, which is Saul. Okay, how he rebukes Saul. Um, and let's go back up. Let's go up to, um, verse eight. It says, and this is in, uh, NIV. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, Gilgal, and Saul's men, they began to scatter. So he said, this Saul Bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offering. Now, he know he's not supposed to do that. We cannot defile the house of the Lord, mm -hmm. God's temple, and we shouldn't be anyway. Amen. But Saul was impatient, and Saul offered up the burnt offering. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived, and Saul went out to greet him. And Samuel immediately realized what Saul had. What? in the world have you done we already know from our studies that it was only certain people allowed in certain places if you weren't a levite a, a, a priest um yeah there were certain places you couldn't be no, saul sure. replied well when i saw that the men were scattering and you didn't come at the set time and that the philistines were assembling at uh mcmash i thought now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. <clears throat> so I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. And Samuel said, you acted foolish. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But guess what? Since you have disobeyed God, but now your kingdom will not endure, the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader 
of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Mm -hmm. Being hard-headed. Being impatient. Could have been a man that God could have used. Yeah. But I don't think there are any surprises to our Lord and Savior. No. Then Samuel left Gilgal and went up to Gibbeth and in Benjamin and Saul counted the men who were with him. They numbered about 600. So the moral of that story is here is the leader not doing what he's supposed to do. Disobeying God. Amen. And then let's go over to um, Mark chapter 7. And it tells us verse 14 through 23. Y'all, wait a minute. My eyes have to get focused there. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everybody, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. Mm. So nothing that goes in, you eat it, smell it, drink it, whatever, however you get on the inside can make a man unclean. He said it's what? What comes out of a man. That's what it said now. Mm. That makes him unclean. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, the disciple asked him about this parable. Uh, are you so dull, he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? But it doesn't go in his heart. But it goes into his stomach it, and it, then it goes in and out of his body. Mm -hmm. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. 20, he went on. He says, what comes out of a man is what make him unclean. Mm. In other words, what comes out of his heart. What heart do you think he's talking about? The one right here. That, that one, show and point to the people, show it to the right people. Here. Yeah, the one that's in between your ears. He went on, what comes out of a man makes him unclean. Verse 21. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. Mm. Oh, Lord. Okay. They, Jesus knows how to get directly to the point, don't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> so today we're talking about young David. So in this week's lesson, our focus is on how God uses young people and children as instruments of his grace. The focus is also on leaders. Mm -hmm. But I want to focus on Godly leaders. Amen. And and I want to ask, well, it's rhetorical because <laughs> this is just like a one-way <laughs> communication. Deacon Saunders, you don't have to answer this one. I'm not. What qualities do you want in a leader? A leader that will can gain your respect and can gain your following. Think about that. What qualities of a leader that will make you respect that person and will make you follow that person in their leadership role? The commentary says that we live in a day and a time when acknowledgement of God is seems to be slowly disappearing from our society. Mm. And I don't know if you agree, but from my viewpoint, uh, of the world today and this world system um, from when I was a child and can understand until where I am an adult um, yeah I can see it dissipating the acknowledgement of God amen 
And where there are godly and faithful leaders, the people will be led in the right direction. Do you believe that? I do, because one thing that um, I believe, and we're taught uh, in our worship center, this is the word of God, this is the truth, and this is how we measure ourselves up against the truth. Amen. Amen. This, when it says, um, check yourself daily, show yourself to, I say, I go, show yourself to be, a, be, a, be approved. Okay, uh huh, it's right here. In the word. Our pastor always teaches us if it's not in here and we're doing some things, yeah, we need to talk to God about it. Is this right, Lord? And so um, we're held to these standards. Yes, we live in, in the world and in the society, but are we living a godly life? And Deacon Saunders admonishes us every week. <laughs> mm. Live a, a life holy. And we can't do that if we don't measure ourselves up against what God says. And, God said it, I believe. and if God said it, there is no but. You know what? Well, God said this, but no, there is no addendum to what God said. He said it. That's what he said. That's yes, what he right. meant. And that's the end. Okay. So we're going to get off that train. Listen, there are many different types of leaders in the world today. Even in the spiritual realm, some are faithful to obey the Lord and others are not. Yeah, we have leaders. Mm -hmm. physically, spiritually, and guess what? All of them might not be godly. And for me, and my husband, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we want to follow godly leaders. Amen? Faithfulness. And even being a leader, both of us, we strive to be godly leaders. Amen? Faithfulness has a lot to do with whether a person will humble himself before the Lord and obey him. Many kings in Israel's history, they failed at their job. They failed at their assignments because their hearts were lifted up in pride. Mm -hmm. We just read about Saul. He couldn't wait. Impatient. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought no people was going to come to Philistine. was mm -hmm. going to come attack us. And he couldn't wait. And after he had done the bad deed, disobeyed God, yeah, rejected what God said, didn't trust, didn't humble himself, all of the above, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So let's see what happened. Um, after the judges, let's talk about Samuel. Samuel became Israel's leader with God serving as the king of kings. So at this time, Samuel is a, a priest. He's a spiritual advisor. Mm -hmm. um, but he's leading the people. And they really didn't have a human king at the beginning of 1 Samuel. Samuel served, uh, like we said, as a priest. He became the first prophet and the last judge in Israel. So when Samuel got to be an old man, so it went on like this for a long time, right? He set his sons up as judges in Israel. Fed up. All the elders of Israel, they got together and they confronted Samuel. They said, look here, Samuel. Look here. Hmm. You old and your sons not cutting the mustard. Is that right? Let's Is that how you say it? Cut, cut the cut mustard. The mustard. <laughs> <laughs> They're not following in your footsteps. They're not doing what you would do as a man of God. So here's what we want you to do. We want a human king. We want you to appoint us a king to rule over us. Everybody else got one. We want to be like everybody else. <laughs> uh oh, that's when we get in trouble when mm -hmm. we want to be like everybody else. So, and I'm in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8. So when Samuel heard their demand, give us a king to rule us. Samuel got in his feelings. He was crushed. He was feeling some kind of way. And Samuel, but this is what I like to Samuel. 
He didn't clap back. He didn't snap back. He didn't try to get back at them. He prayed. Mm. That's a valuable lesson to us. Oh, yeah. When we get into our feelings about something, go to God in prayer. That's right. Take it to God in prayer. And God answered Samuel. He said, okay, they want a human king. Go ahead and do what they're asking. They are not because, guess what? They are not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We have to be careful when sometimes when we disobey or huh, don't go along with our spiritual leaders and they tell us, okay, let your will be done. Go ahead on. Um, we have to realize we're rejecting God, not the person. From uh, the day that I brought them out of Egypt, God said, until this very day, they've been behaving like this. They've been rejecting me and leaving me for the idol gods. OMG. Mm. Oh my goodness. Because that speaks about this world today and people today. Listen. We'll run to God when things are bad. God takes us. He comforts us. He protects us. He sends us solutions. And then we go right back. Same old, same old. Turn right away from God, leave God for our little idol God. You know, that's the things in the world and that's the things that we love. So God said, told Samuel, let them have their way, but warn them. They gonna be in for a surprise and a rude awakening. He said, tell them. They don't realize how human kings operate. See, the other people know how human kings operate because they've been there. Mm -hmm. You know how you see something and you want it. And you just got to have it because it looks so good. And then when you get it, you be like, what? <laughs> That's me. I done been there and done that. And then it's sitting over there in the corner collecting dust. Mm -hmm. And I don't word myself, uh, just bothered myself to obtain it. But he said, let them, let them find out how, how human kings operate. They're going to see what they're going to get. And um, then we move over to 1 Samuel chapter 9. So there was a man from uh, a tribe of Benjamin named Kish. And Kish had a son whose name was Saul. Now it says Saul, Saul was a, 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 a handsome young man. And it says he was tall. He literally stood head and shoulders above the crowd. So he tall and handsome. Deacon Summers, can I say I can? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, y'all already said it. <laughs> Listen, God had confided in Samuel. He said, this time tomorrow, y'all have to go read the stories. He said, I'm sending a man from the land of Benjamin, and I'm sending him to meet you, Samuel. Now, stop right there. All this time, who's been communicating? Samuel mm. and who? God, God yeah. right? Samuel is talking to God. God is answering Samuel, right? And giving him instructions. Mm -hmm. Listen. And the only two people in that equation is what? Samuel and God, right? Listen, y'all. When our pastors, our bishops, our spiritual leaders, I'm not sure what else to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the people who are in charge of the congregation. Listen, we don't know what God has spoke to them. We just have to be obedient. Sometimes we sit back and in the country and we be like, well, I wonder why he or she doing that or why they doing that, that or why they changed that or why they did that. Mm -hmm. Listen, sometimes we have to know that God is in communication if we believe that and trust that. Sometimes, and we, if, got, sometimes we just got to be still. It be, yes. And get out of the way and tell your own way. business because be that's the business between Samuel the pastors and God. He has given them instructions on what to do. And so we just have to trust and believe and pray for our leaders. Amen. Perpetually be in prayer. Amen. Even if we don't agree with some things. So um, Samuel, God told Samuel, he said, this time tomorrow, I'm going to send a man from the land of Benjamin to meet you. And what I need you to do, Samuel, you anoint him as prince over the people. He's going to be the first king. And he said, I will free my people from the Philistine oppression. Yes, I know all about their hard circumstances. I've heard their cries for help. 
So God is still the king of kings, y'all, mm -hmm. and he's the Lord of lords. But he just going to operate with Saul in charge. The moment Samuel laid eyes on Saul, God said, mm, that's the one. That's the one right there. That's the man I told you about. <laughs> yeah, he's the one that's going to be your sign to keep these people in check. And then after some while, a while had passed. Politically, Israel was in turmoil. Kind of like we are today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Politically, we in turmoil. But unfortunately, Saul did not measure up as God's king. And we read about it in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 13. And then Saul, he started out real good, but then he got, I think he got, got kind of big head. The, the, he got, the he got people big. showed favor to him and mm -hmm. he just, he got yeah, big head. yeah, Bob yeah, Lama, he got big head. Uh -huh. And so, um, he, yeah, we start, sometimes we get in power authority. Uh, some people can tend to take, want to take the credit. We know that God gets all the glory. And, uh, but when you want to take the credit and then if you make it all about you, um, yeah, it becomes problematic. Idea. Yeah. That's not a good virtue or characteristic of a godly leader. Um, so God finally announced his rejection, the rejection, his rejection of Saul as king. And specifically when Saul played the role of the priest and disobeyed God by refusing to annihilate the Amalekites. While, Saul, while King Saul was making one mistake on top of another, God sent Samuel to find his chosen shepherd, David. David is believed to have been, at this time, about 12 to 16 years old. So he was a kid, a teenager, when he was anointed as the king of Israel. So now we're going to get into the story. Hmm. Okay? So our scripture lesson text is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 16, Verses, verse 1, just verse 1, Deacon Saunders. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thy horns with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, Bethlehemite for I have provided me a king among his sons. All right, so mm -hmm. now Samuel, although he had to do some things to 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 rebuke Saul, this boy is the, I mean, I'm called this sir, the priest. <laughs> Sorry, that's all me, boy. He, but he in his feelings, Deacon Saunders. Mm -hmm. He in his feelings. The Lord told him, he said, okay, you done mourned, lamented, you done been sad for a minute now. Now I have work for you to do. Samuel is in mourning over something, listen, that God has control over. Say, that was Saul's season. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our seasons might be over. That's right. It might be time for someone else to step in. <laughs> Amen. Been there and done that. And in this story, God is working on his plan for his people the vision, the plan that he has for his people, which is from the beginning to the end of time. And listen, it was all not centered around Pololo Saul. All right. And um, the Lord rejects all who will not obey his word. And he was doing fine until he did what? Rejected the Lord. All right. Then God told um, Samuel, he said, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. You have some anointing to do. Mm. Because he said, I'm sending you to Jesse, to see Jesse of Bethlehem. He said, because I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Now, we know this oil. You can imagine this oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if the Holy Spirit is present... Y'all, I don't know about y'all, but thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit being present, omnipresent, everywhere, uh, all around me. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you for your anointing, Jesus. It is always in order. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is present um, when they're going out for a mission to be accomplished and for a mission to be completed. Seems fitting 
Mm-hmm. When we go out doing missionary work, don't we want to take uh, the Lord with us? The spirit Amen. of the Lord with us? Amen. Amen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay? So it says that the Holy Spirit is present. It is always present in order that a mission be accomplished. So God told Samuel, he said, go to Bethlehem and go to the house of Jesse and you're going to find my replacement king. The horn filled with oil, we said again, was for also not just for the Holy Spirit, but for the anointing of this new king. Samuel was willing to obey God. He has always obeyed God. And he mm-hmm. just seen firsthand what disobeying God brought. Mm-hmm. So, but there was one problem, Deacon Saunders. Uh-oh. Go to verse 2 and tell us what that problem was. <laughs> and Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take and heifer with thee, and say, I'm, I'm come to sacrifice to the Lord. Okay, now Samuel being a man of God, he often traveled, um, went out to worship, mm-hmm. um, and make sacrifices unto the Lord in the worship service among the people, right? So Saul knew the whereabouts of significant people in the kingdom. And he would surely find out about Samuel's journey. So how can Samuel make this trip without putting his life in jeopardy? And here, God was not creating an excuse. That's what I say. He's not creating. He don't have to. Because he could have zapped Saul in a minute. Mm. Amen. He don't have to create an excuse. But sometimes we have to look beyond. Oh, Lord. I tell my little young granddaughter that all the time. Well, Nana, I can't. My job. I can't, baby, if you don't put in a job application, but but this and but that. And listen, sometimes we have to look beyond the obstacles that we think are in the way and come up and think about different alternatives and ways that we can move around those obstacles if that's what God told us to do. Yeah. Amen? This commentary says here, the flesh always tries to kill the spirit. I can't do it. <laughs> but if, if I do that, but what about this? The two cannot abide. This work of the flesh demanded by Israel will hinder and quite possibly delay the work of the spirit. How much does the church deprive itself? Because it follows the ways of man and not of the Lord. Ooh, good question. Mm. It is said that the very work of the flesh which causes us so much difficulty and problem is, in fact, created by our own imagination, Mm -hmm. our own self, whatever, uh created by our own design. Mm -hmm. Many times we build up these obstacles because of fear or because of anxiety or because of just not knowing uh, whatever the case may be. But since God had given Samuel this assignment, don't you think God already knew that uh, he needed to make a way for Samuel to get out of there, to carry out his plan? One thing I do believe, God will protect us. If he gave you an instruction, he will protect you and he will provide. He'll make a way. They say he'll make a way out of no way. Mm-hmm. Then the Lord told, so he told him, he said, you a man of God, go make a sacrifice and go to the worship service. So he told him to take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And he wasn't lying. No, he wasn't. He wasn't lying. He was doing what God had told him to do. See, one thing about it, y'all. God knows our hearts. So if he so told Samuel to take an animal with him for the sacrifice, after all, Samuel was the holy man, and apparently Samuel had traveled from place to place and led the people in worship and through the uh, offering of sacrifices, okay? So there were two assignments given. One was known. Mm -hmm. He was going because I guess he had to tell him I'm traveling to do such and such and such. So one was known, and guess what? One was unknown. Look at God at work. Mm. So this is what I have. Let's stop making excuses for assignments that are given to us when we can't see past the obstacles that we create and put in our way. Because God can. 
He can, he will, and he will provide. All right. If we do the possible, he can do the impossible. He can do the impossible. All right. But the key to that, Sister Simon, is you as a believer have to truly believe that. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't believe it, then it's void. You you have to have faith. Have the faith in whatever you ask God for. Whatever, if God working through somebody else, you have to have that faith that, I'm not saying put your faith in in, in, in your pastor, I'll start worshiping your pastor. But if God called your pastor to, to be the shepherd of that church, then you show respect to that shepherd mm -hmm. and, 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 and do what he say, unless he deviate from this, then you follow him. Let me ask you, how did you feel public speaking? Deacon Sanders will sing all he want to, he'll testify all he want to, but public speaking, that's another thing. So how did you feel when you were first asked to teach a class? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what was your response? I said yes. But uh, I was afraid. I would be telling you a story if I wasn't afraid. And the reason why I'm, I'd be so afraid is because I don't want to say something that's wrong according to what thus said the law. See, so when you when you speaking on God's word, you want to be right. You want to make sure you're right because mm -hmm. you you are uh, 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 trying to bring somebody else to Christ, and I don't want to try to bring somebody else to Christ by telling them the wrong the wrong thing. I want to see what thus said the law. But keep in mm -hmm. mind, if we lift up Jesus, right, He do the drawing. He do the drawing. Okay, He does the drawing. But I'm telling you, he'd he be devastated. He'd be so nervous, okay? But he don't say no. no. That's the part right there. He doesn't say no. No, I don't. And sometimes we're put in situations like that when we're given an assignment and we're like, um, um, okay. And then, you know what? When it's all over, you be like, Phew. thank you, Lord. Oof. And you have to give him the glory because he's the one that, that takes you That's through right. those tough times. So I can kind of understand how how uh, uh, Samuel is feeling. I got to go over here to Jesse and anoint a new king. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and King Saul is over here sulking and being rejected. And uh, he's feeling some kind of way. So, yeah, he might be on that. Mm -hmm. All right. Charlie, say hey to the people, Charlie. Give me his leash. <laughs> Got it. Come on. Okay. All right. So, verse 3. Let's see what happens. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Okay. So, God told... Samuel, invite, go to Jesse's house, invite him to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. He said, you are to anoint for me the one that I indicate. So this is one of Jesse's sons. Mm -hmm. So in order to further help Samuel accomplish his will, God specifically instructs him to invite Jesse to the worship service. And during the service, God will show Samuel which one of these boys is going to be the next king? Now, for Samuel, it was just a matter of being obedient. Mm -hmm. He was just trusting the Lord, doing what God had told him to do. And that's what we have to do in our situations. When he got his first assignment, he was devastated. Mm. Consult the Lord. Amen. Lord, they asked me, I'm trusting you. I'm depending on you. It might not be perfect, but I'm doing this because of the love uh, that he has Amen. for Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So in our situations, in our daily lives, we have to consult the Lord. Then trust the Lord. Trust the Lord's process. His process may not be like our process. Amen. And then we have to obey his instruction. Listen. God does not choose to reveal immediately the entirety of his will in most matters. Rather, he expects us to be obedient to do what we know and to trust him to continually guide us through the path that he has chosen, even though that path 
might not be revealed to us. And this is what I said. Close your eyes or put your hands over your eyes and listen to the instructions of the Lord spiritually. Right, see, if we can't see where we're going and we got to trust that process, this is spiritually, metaphorically, what we have to do, right? In order to follow the Lord with our spiritual heart. That's how we follow him with our spiritual heart. Amen? And this is what Samuel is doing. All right, verse 4. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came unto Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming. Okay, y'all. Here comes Samuel. And it says when he got to Bethlehem, the elders were a little afraid. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you come in peace, sir? Um, um, <laughs> they were fearful. What are you doing here? What's wrong? <laughs> See, Samuel had just recently carried out the execution of King uh, Agag. A-G-A-G. -A -G. So I'm going to say Agag of the Amalekites because God had decreed that Agag's demise. So the people were in fear that Samuel might be coming here in judgment against them. So let's take you to that story. Now remember, um, uh, Saul didn't uh, annihilate the Amalekites, mm -hmm. right? Back when he was trying to make that sacrifice in error. Um, but if we move over to 1 Samuel chapter 15, uh, beginning at verse 24, it says, Saul gave in and confessed, I did wrong. And he said, I've sinned. I've trampled roughshod over God's word and your instruction, Samuel. I cared more about pleasing the people. I let them tell me what to do. Oh, absolve me of my sin. Take my hand and lead me to the altar so I can worship God. Thank, thank God for Jesus. Because mm -hmm. see, God didn't play. <laughs> but Jesus, we can repent. And God, will, I mean, Jesus will forgive us mm -hmm. through the blood of Jesus. He paid it all. Um, thank you, Jesus. But in this situation, Samuel refused. He said, no, I cannot come alongside you in this. You rejected God's command, and now God has rejected you as king over Israel. As Samuel turned to leave, Saul grabbed at his priestly robe and a piece tore off. And see, the spiritual advisors, they were important because God spoke through them. Mm -hmm. So when the enemy came up against the uh, people of God, they knew what to do. And God will go before and prepare for them to be um, victorious in All battle. Right, but if God took his hands on, Saul was afraid. And Samuel was like, no, I can't come alongside you in this. You blatantly disobeyed God. Mm -hmm. And verse 27 says, as Samuel turned to leave, Saul grabbed at his priestly robe and a piece tore off. And Samuel said, God has just not torn the kingdom from you, and he handed it over to your neighbor, a better man than you are. Mm. See, sometimes in, in transitions, sometimes you just got to let things play out. Yep. When there's a transition from one leader to the, to the next, God knows best. That's the best way I can That's put it. it. God knows best. And Israel's God of glory doesn't deceive and he doesn't dip. He says what he means and he means what he said. God didn't play. Jesus tried again. I mean, um, Jesus, sorry y'all. <laughs> and my man went on Jesus. Saul tried again. Saul said, Saul, look, Samuel, I have sinned, but please don't abandon me. Support me with your presence before the leaders and the people. Come long, alongside me as I go back to worship. So Samuel's support was very important to Saul. Mm -hmm. He needed to see that, you know, because the people, yeah, because long as Samuel was there, they know, they know God, God, the presence of God, God was there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Samuel did. He went back with Saul, and Saul dropped to his knees before God, and he worshiped. Then Samuel said, 
present King Agag, Agag, A-G-A-G, of Amalek to me. Samuel called for him. He said, let me do what you should have did before. Agag came, dragging his feet, muttering that he'd be better off dead. Samuel said, just as your sword made many a woman childless, so your mother will be childless among those women. And Samuel cut a gag down in the presence of God, right there in Gilgal. Mm. Now, so Samuel had just executed this man, mm. Samuel, the priest, yes. So when Samuel showed up in Bethlehem, people were like, um, sir, in verse <laughs> 4, um, can we help you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, verse 5 is not in our scripture lesson text. It jumped to verse 6, but I'm going to read it. It says, Samuel replied, Yes, I have come in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourself and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So he told them the reason that he, well, part of the reason, one of the reasons that he had come to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. So let's go to verse 6. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Ehab and said, Surely the Lord anointed it us. It anoint Let me start over. I'm sorry. And it came to pass when they were come and that they looked on Ehab and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. So Jesse and his sons were at the worship service, right? And Samuel saw Jesse's oldest son, Eliab, Eliab, E-L-I-A-B. And he thought, hmm. He looked at that boy up and down and said, hmm, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before me. He thought he was the one. Jesse and his sons, with the exception of David, appeared before Samuel. And one of the boys had to look like, and it must have been this Eliab, like king material, because Samuel said, mm, surely the Lord's anointed stand before him. Now, what does that tell us? Saul made a, an assumption based on looks. Mm -hmm. Can we stop right there? Saul made an assumption. How many times do we do that? Mm -hmm. Come on, single women and single men. Y'all ask some of these married people. It goes it's because they see somebody and... <laughs> and what looks good on the outside, you better try. That's fine. That's good. That's marvelous. That's wonderful. But make sure you know it's just equally good on the inside. Okay? Amen? Amen. We got to know who we marrying and who we hooking up with. And partnering with. And then when we become, what they say, unequally yoked, then it's a world of trouble. Amen. Been there and done that. Amen. Been there and done that. <laughs> Amen. So it seems like Jesse and his sons appeared before Samuel in order of their ages. And so Eliab was the oldest and the first one to step before Samuel. The commentary says that Eliab was tall and handsome and apparently everything one would look for physically in a leader. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, I've been on some interview teams mm -hmm. and I would look at all the candidates and the majority of the people would select one or two of their choice based on whatever they were looking at characteristics. And I would be sitting there thinking, what in the world are they thinking? This person here had way more of this what's needed for the position or that what's needed for the position. And um, so sometimes we're not good characters of what, judgment um, mm -hmm. when it comes to things like that. Um, but nonetheless, Eliab made a good impression on Samuel. And Samuel instantly felt that he was surely the man that God had chosen. Mm -hmm. So this goes to shows us, show us that even a great prophet like Samuel cannot trust his own intuition. That's why we have to passionately seek God and his will concerned. We got to take down some things to, to God in prayer. Amen. Lord, show me if this is not the right one, or if this is not the right assignment or whatever. Let me tell you, I have gotten some jobs. I have a platform. 
But I certainly said, Lord, if your will be done, because if, why would I put myself in a position in a situation that I can't handle? Right? Right. That's right. Yeah. And even if I got it, can you imagine the, whew, the trouble and the heartache and the frustration and anxiety and all of that I will be taking myself through? Amen? So, um, we can't just trust our own intuition. We have to seek God concerning his will regarding all things, whether they're big or small. All right, verse 7. The Lord, but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look, not on his appearance of his countenance or on the height of his structure, stature, stature because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth see not a man seeth. See for a man looked upon the outward appearance, but the Lord looked on the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He that. said, God tell him right there, he said, don't consider the appearance or the height of this person because I have rejected him. He said, I don't, I'm the Lord. I'm God. I don't look at the things like people do. I'm spiritual. I'm not carnal. He said, people look at the outward appearance. Mm -hmm. He said, but I'm the Lord. And I look at the heart of a man. So sometimes when we say, how can God use that man? Or why is God using that person? Because he's looking at that person's looking heart. At his heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Listen. Only God knows the heart of man. God does not evaluate us by what we appear to be before others. He evaluates us by what he sees in our hearts. There is nothing about us hidden from God. And um, I put this in here. This is actually in the Sunday School commentary. Well, most of this is. Uh, it says, J. Vernon McGee wrote this. He says, when God looks at us, he looks at us from the inside. He's an interior decorator. Mm -hmm. He always checks the interior, the inside. We are so apt to judge folks. Even in our Christian circles, we judge folks. We judge them by their looks. We judge them by their stature symbols. We judge them by whatever. But we are so apt to judge people. And then Jeremiah wrote, he says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Because one thing I, you can do, you can hide. People cannot read your thoughts, but no, God no. can. Amen. He says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. And you can find that in Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. It is important for us to recognize that when we stand before God on the last day, we will be totally without excuse. Amen. God will know what our true motives are. Right? Mm -hmm. He'll know what your true thoughts are. And we will be stripped of all pretenses, excuses, anything else that you can come up with at that time. But you know, Lord, to see what this will have happened. No, it ain't going to be time for none of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, verse 8. Verses 8 and 9. Then Jesse called Abinadad, Abinadad and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord cho chose this. Okay. So um, Jesse sent two more of his sons. He sent the, 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 the next one. Uh, what is his name? Abinadab. Mm -hmm. And then he sent Shammah. 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 Um, and, and, and God said, No, I, not, neither one of them. I hadn't chosen neither one of them. Now, here we see what? Rejection. Right? These were people who were willing. Actually, all three were willing. And God said no. Right? God quickly informed Samuel that the next two brothers were not his choice. This might seem like rejection, especially when the heart is willing. But God was, he's fulfilling a purpose. It has to be the one. In God's business and his plan, the forever plan for his kingdom, it has to be the specific one. It mm -hmm. had to be Mary, That's the right. virgin. That's right. Right? 
It had to be. It had to be Joseph. Mm -hmm. It had to be Jesse. It had to be David. It had to be Ruth. Mm -hmm. It had to be all these people that were a part of the plan along the way. Amen? Amen. So, um, God was fulfilling his promise to guide Samuel. So, all Samuel had to do was just to listen and to keep following. And that's for us. Mm -hmm. I might not be chosen, but I still have to. Although my heart is willing, I got to serve in some other capacity. That's right. Because I have to follow God's instructions. As we can see, the rejection is not personal. It's not against you. It's not about whatever. Um, it was about the kingdom of God. That's Amen. what it's about in the end. It's about God fulfilling the plan. His original plan. Amen. All right. Verse 10. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord has not chosen thee. Eleven. So listen, when we're under God-fearing leadership, we must trust the judgment and the instructions of our leaders. If he says, this was your assignment for a minute, but when the right person comes along, there's a transition that has to take place. I can't take that personal. Amen. If God gave them instruction, that means that he didn't give it. To, if God gave whoever the leaders are the instructions, and I think we said that earlier. Mm, we did. If God give our leaders instructions and he don't give it, he don't give it to us. He give it to them. We have to be in perpetual prayer for them. Jesse ain't know what was going on. He, he had all his boys to come mm -hmm. up him. So we think. And God said, say, no, ain't the right ones. Amen? So what do you think Jesse is thinking after all his sons being rejected? He's probably like, Can you, are you kidding me? And Samuel probably thinking, well, wait a minute now. God, I know God don't make no mistakes. And this man that presented all his sons and God has rejected all of them. Something's wrong. Verse 11. And Sammy said unto Jesse, And Sammy said unto Jesse, Are here all these children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and he's and and behold, he's keeping the sheep. And Sammy said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for he will not set down till he come help him. Okay, mm. so listen. Jesse holding out. <laughs> And when all seems lost, there's still hope. Now, here's a little shepherd boy that hadn't been presented. And when we think about the little shepherd boy, we think about what? The good shepherd. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Jesus. See, this mission was so important that Samuel said, it, it has to be another. Are these all your children? And he said, no, it's just one. But Jesse didn't think, I guess he didn't think it was important to bring him, right? So um, David was the youngest, and his father apparently thought it would be useless to bring him into the worship service. Generally, those who are rejected by men, listen, those are the ones that God chooses. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so um, Samuel knew God didn't make the mistakes. And he said, you know what? We got to wait right here until you go get him and bring him here. Mm -hmm. All right, verses 12, verse 12. And he said, bring him in. Now he was rooted and with all of a beauty, contents and godly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. All right. Ooh. So they sent for David. He was glowing. It said with health. He had a fine appearance. He was handsome features. And the Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. David had to be considered since all the others had not been chosen by God. David is described as Rudy, which means red-haired. And David, they say David was good looking and he was handsome. Mm -hmm. But we do know that was not the reason that God chose David. Mm -hmm. 
We already read earlier in what verse when God told him, I don't look at the outward appearance. Look at the inner appearance. He say uh, in verse 7 at the end, but the Lord looketh on the what? The heart. the heart. He saw the heart of David and he told Samuel, he said, arise and anoint that young man right there. Anoint that boy for this is he. This is the one. And our last verse, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Ramah. Okay. So Samuel took the oil. Hold on, y'all. I'm looking for my scripture here. I'm going to leave y'all with the scripture. All right. Samuel took the uh, horn of oil, anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Mean that it stayed on David. Mm -hmm. Now, see, remember, we said David was between, what, 12 and 6. He was young. Mm -hmm. And when Samuel did what he went to do, then he went to Ramah. The initial anointing of David was done in a private ceremony. Two public anointings came much later. Once when David became king over Judah and again when he became king over the entire United Nation of Israel. And you can go to 2 Samuel chapters 2 and chapter 5. For now, Saul was still the king, but God was not indicating his will, uh, but God was indicating his will for David in the future and using this situation to begin preparing David for his upcoming responsibility. Part of that preparation was the coming of the spirit of the Lord upon young David. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord came upon because he had a willing heart. Listen, open the eyes of my heart, uh -oh. Lord. Yes. <laughs> uh, the constant presence of the spirit upon David pointed to the, listen to this y'all, to the pointed, it pointed or is given us a, a hint of the permanent indwelling of the spirit in all new covenant believers. That's us. And you can find that in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14. And once Samuel's mission was completed, he returned to his home in Ramah. Now, as I said at the beginning of the lesson, we don't know that the plan that God has for our children. Amen. So I just continuously pray the anointing of the Spirit of God upon all our children in the name of Jesus. Listen, God is looking for faithful leaders who have a heart for him and who has a heart for his mission on this earth. He often uses ordinary people, Amen. women, children, men, who in turn will faithfully lead others with divinely given wisdom. And um, lastly, I just want to leave you, I just want to read uh, Psalms 51. All right, man. It says, this is a Psalm of uh, David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. And David was in prayer. And this is what David said. He said, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. All right, man. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. And surely... You desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the innermost, in the inmost place. Then he says, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. And this is in the NIV. Mm -hmm. He says, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. And... 10 says, create me a pure heart. King James says, a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 
Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And I'm going to stop right there at verse 12. Leaders. Amen. Godly. Choose godly leaders. Be a godly leader. And sometimes, even if we're not in leadership positions, how, how does that thing go? We can, there's upward leadership. Mm -hmm. In other words, sometimes we can have some leaders who may not be acting or performing in a godly manner, but it's how you humble yourself and how you show leadership in an upward position. Amen. That just might make everything work out, out all right. That's right. For that leader, right? And one more. That's what God has designed for us to do. And that's right. And one more important thing is, uh, your leader, your pastor, don't worship him. But if, like I said earlier, if your pastor is following the Bible, then follow him. But I don't always worship, worship him. Jesus. But okay. give God the honor and the glory, glory. and the praise. Yes. Okay. And Amen. I pray that we have said something to bless you. And uh, until we meet again next week, uh, we will actually be coming to you next week from New Jersey. Uh, if the Lord say so, so pray for us and our travels uh, and returning back home safely. Amen. And again, Amen. until our next edition Amen. of the Sunday School lesson. Be blessed. And see you next Sunday.